Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Star Wars The Old Republic Sith Inquisitor Edition. And now, when we left off, we had just reached level 14, but of course I completed a quest upon stepping foot onto the Imperial Fleet Station. And now we can speak to Lord Krillis, uh, probably about going to our class trainer. At long last, Lord Zash's apprentice. May you soon gain the honours you so well deserve. On Korriban, you earned the right to be called Sith. But that was only the beginning. Your master wishes me to oversee your continued training. Someday I will rule the Sith. There is no limit to my strength. From all I've heard from Lord Zash, I believe it. Lord Zash embraces the search for dark artifacts and secrets. Others choose the martial path, channeling their anger into physical strength. You too must find your path. I wish to master the art of a lightsaber. Think it over. Speak to Overseer Cryos when you're ready to begin your training in earnest. Yes, this is actually the advanced class introduction. So I would say probably not incredibly useful for us right now because we have already chosen it. But we are going to be heading over there anyway. Do bear in mind I have 38 pieces of mail from you guys out there. So <laughs> do bear that in mind. Wow. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that whatsoever. But thank you nevertheless. And please, do not send me too much. I am going to be skipping that because he is telling us what we already know. And that is, of course, what kind of things we can learn. And wait a second, this is actually the thing that gives us a shield chance and armor rating and everything like that. So discharge is going to be wonderful to use. Gonna put that there, thank you very much. Increases the effect of your lightsaber charges. Ah, increases the critical hit chance of lightning charge by 50%. What are we using? We're using surging charge, and that increases our armor penetration by 10%. Is that actually better than what we have? I don't know. Mind control seems pretty fun. We can probably use that. Force lightning, and then everything around here. Ah, crushing darkness. That seems like quite a cool ability. Maybe we can learn that. And then we can put that probably here. And we can also use a speeder pilot. Already. We can already, already use a speeder. That's actually really cool. I was not expecting to be able to use one of those at any point. Because, of course, I do have difficulties finding those things. But this is the thing, you see. I am not entirely sure whether I should look at the mail right now. Because... Of course, I would like to get to Drummond Cast, so I do believe what we will be doing is getting on a shuttle, and then we will, of course, be looking at our mail towards the end of the episode, because we get straight into the action, we complete a couple of quests, and then we can go from there. I think that's probably going to be the way we'll do things from now on, instead of going and looking at the mail to begin with. I think at the end of the episode is probably the best idea, so that for those of you that don't really like the mail reading section, you can... Turn off, switch off, whenever you like to do that. So I think that would probably be better. And without further ado, we should probably be heading into the shuttle to Drummond Kass. And There we have it. Very nice indeed. Now, it's probably going to take us there instantly, I hope. And then we'll be able to speak to our correspondent, our contact on the surface. And I'm actually quite happy that we have the tanking companion right now, because even though we are a melee unit, the tanking companion can actually do quite a lot for us, and I'm very pleased about having him. So that is good. He also scares people, which is always a good thing. I like that quite a bit. Okay, so Dark Charge, that is pretty much pointless for us right now. We're not really wanting to be a tank, so we're going to be removing that, and I'm actually going to be putting on... Wait a minute, what was it? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I already put that on. Oh, okay, so that's great. So we can actually just move that over there. That's going to be a little bit better. And now we can interact with the Arrivals console. Your music alias is the most Quiet, bodyguard. Save your hissing for your own kind. As for you, slave, Darth Scotia is passing. Best 
Get out of his way. Darth Scotia can wait. You're making a huge mistake, filth. Give your master a message for me. My eye is on her, and I know. Tell her that. I know what she's trying to do here on Drummond Cass. You and your master have gotten this far, but it ends here, slave. I alone have the key. Tell her that. You and your master have no future on Drummond Cass or in the Sith Order. Tell her that. Now, get out of my way. What do you think? Can you eat him? Jani Bragais, uns in Freistubnajal. Ha! Fools! Oh. More machine than man. Well, that's not a good sign, is it? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, we're going to be... Wait, what, what is... Oh, my goodness. The customs droids are actually scanning us. We're not bringing any contraband on here. We're practically naked underneath all this robe. Well. Hmm. What am I saying? <laughs> no, but seriously, we really don't have that much gear. We really do not. And that's actually what we would look like if we did not have this really cool cosmetic robe on right now. So, yes, there is that. Okay, so yeah, I can actually remove Seed from our bar now as well. I can probably use our rocket boost to get out there a little bit quicker. We do have a mailbox right here, but as I said, we will do that at the end of the episode. And so, let us head on to Cars City. And so, we have arrived in Cars City, and we will now be heading over to report to Lord Zash. And I do believe she is over there, so let's take yet another taxi. And we'll see what she has to say. Now, I do believe she's probably going to be sending us on some sort of errand, but I am more than willing to do that because I am quite liking her as a master right now. She seems to be strict but fair, perhaps. But we will see whether that continues. Um, that kind of worries me a little bit, actually. But yes, also, I have specced our first utility point into Lombast as that increases the damage dealt by Lacerate by 25%. And as you can see, I love Lacerate. It does so much damage, and I'm able to do it at any time without any target, which actually makes it really cool, in my opinion. So, <laughs> I like that quite a bit. So, yes, without further ado, let us head in to Lord Zash. Are you acquainted with the big, ugly, half-machine Dark Lord? He had a message for you. Damn Scotia! What business has he going behind my back, speaking to my apprentice? Trying to intimidate you, no doubt. Wretched monster. More machine than man and dangerously powerful. Now, ever since I arrived on Dromund Cast as an apprentice, he's made every effort to stand in my way. Ultimately, we cannot even begin the search for Tulakhod's ancient power with Scotia's rattling breath on our necks. Somebody should stop him from breathing, then. Yes, and that somebody is you. You are going to kill Scotia for me. Finally, a challenge worthy of me. Good. That is precisely the attitude you'll need. I cannot be tied to Scotia's murder. Brazen power plays make the Dark Council nervous. But nobody will believe that a mere apprentice could defeat Scotia. It's impossible. And that's why it will work. The impossible's my speciality. So it seems. I've begun to piece together the puzzle for Darth Scotia's destruction, but some elements have yet to fall into place. Out in the jungle, a group of slaves has recently revolted. They were working on a colossal statue that has since gone unfinished. I believe Scotia is hiding something of great importance near this statue, Get the archaeological plans to the area from one of the slaves, and contact me by holo communicator. In bizoze waitai spila press in kretai. In bize e wanata atragata indais. Oh, oh, okay. Well, Kemval's got our back. 
I like that. <laughs> I like that, that's for sure. So him saying that, that actually makes me feel a little bit uneasy about our master's intentions, should we say. And I'm a little bit skeptical about what she is intending to, to do most of the time. So let's see. We're going to be heading over to get the fragmented archaeological plants, and I'll see you there. Okay, so we have reached the unfinished Colossus construction site, and as you can see, it actually took us a rather considerable amount of time, because I was unaware that you had to go south instead of east, and so I got a little bit lost, and it took me a lot more time than I anticipated. But we are going to be heading in here and taking out these guys without too many difficulties, because of course we do have that improved damage to our lacerate spell now. Well, not spell, but our lacerate ability, and... We are going to be getting those fragments, as you can see, there we are. Some archaeological plans already, very nice indeed. So let's just rejuvenate a little bit of our HP, and then we'll be heading in against these guys as well. So what we do need to take note of is the fact that this right here, this static charge, we need to make sure that we have our eye on that, because as long as we use that efficiently, I do believe we will be able to take out pretty much anyone that we set our sights on. As you can see, we can now use it, and look at that, 240 damage. Wow, that's actually really quite nice. And there we have it. Another basic commendation as well, I do like those. We do have someone over here, a mercenary. I should probably buff them, shouldn't I? I should probably buff them, how can I buff them? Like this, there we go. And there we have it, very nice. So, let us take these guys out. And I do actually... Wait a minute, let's move out of the way of that. Thank you very much. I do actually think that... Oh yes, Kemval does need to speak to us. So yeah, we're going to be going off and doing that rather soon when we get back to the Imperial Fleet, perhaps. Or maybe in a cantina. But there it is, we collected all of the plans and now we can contact Lord Zash through our Hollow Communicator. Does this mean you found them? You found the archaeological plans. Of course, my master. Fantastic. I never doubted you. Now, let me see. Ah, yes. How clever. There's a chamber hidden under the Colossus itself. I bet my complete collection of Naga Sado's Yavin 4 writings that you'll find what we're looking for in this chamber. I'll get inside if I have to destroy the whole Colossus. Such zeal. But destroying the Colossus won't be necessary. There should be a hidden entrance near the Colossus. It looks like Scotia has an entire underground base. You're looking for a tablet. The tablet is the symbol of leadership of an obscure Trandoshan cult. The lizards believe it was a gift from their deity, the Scorekeeper. Scotia stole the tablet and uses it to exert control over his Trandoshan bodyguards. Give them their relic, and Scotia's power over his bodyguards will turn to vapor. His own defenses will be his downfall. You could try it. It might weaken him a little. Scotia's not stupid enough to retain guards who could actually overpower him. The main thing is to keep Scotia's bodyguards off you. The plans suggest Scotia's apprentices guard this base. I don't doubt they hold the keys to acquiring the Trandoshan tablet. Best kill them all to be sure. Inupis just nas jans, now me pan astana tods jans. I would like to. That is for sure. Goodness me, everyone seems to be really scared of Kem Val, so I am unsure why we don't use him more to eat people. Yes, that would be quite good, I do believe. Eat the bad people. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're actually playing a bad guy right now, but still. I am rather enjoying it. So let's take a look. Ah, there is the cave. That is where we need to go. So let us attack these fellows right here and get past them without too many difficulties, I hope. I'm actually wondering whether the armor piercing, or should we say the armor penetration that we gained from the passive at level 14 is enough to justify us using this over lightning charge because 50% chance for a 50% chance the critical with 27 damage, 27 energy damage, whereas this does give us a static charge, allows us to use discharge. So I'm thinking, well, maybe that is a good idea. I, I really do not know. I'm actually a little bit confused about which kind of stance we should be using, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I feel like Lightning Charge might actually be the way to go because it does have the critical chance 
multiplier and a little bit of armor penetration, 10%, is that really enough to justify it? That's the thing we have to ask ourselves. Not entirely sure really about it right now, but we'll see. We will see. And I do want to try and use Discharge a little bit more often because I'd like to just ascertain what's currently going on with it because even though we are taking these guys out relatively easily, it seems that it may just be so much easier if we had the right stance, so we'll see. I do have two charges right now. I have three charges right now, so let's see how much damage we do. 237. Now let's take a look here. Oh, it actually has different... Oh. Unleashes your current lightsaber charge upon the target, applying an effect based on your current charge. So, wait a second. This doesn't actually give us static charges, though. Surging charge is the only thing that gives us charges, whereas lightning charge doesn't, as far as I'm aware. But it has an effect. So I suppose what they want you to do is switch between them. They want you to rotate between the various stances. That surely can't be it. That's a little bit clunky, isn't it? Hmm. Rather interesting, though, I have to admit. Maybe we will have to do that at some point, but right now I would really prefer not to. Oh my. We're going to be against a couple of these Scotia Initiates now. Do bear in mind that we are only level 15. These guys are level 14. So, Oh, and 10. Okay. So these 10 guys are probably going to be relatively easy, but of course the Acolytes perhaps not so much. So we need to get on top here. There we are. Now I would like to use Crushing Darkness against a harder enemy, as you can see right here. That does a dark cloud of energy to crush the target, instantly dealing a good amount of kinetic damage and then another load of kinetic damage after that. Ah, we could use it on this Bunker Commander or on Apprentice Irex. Hmm. Okay, well we need to head in before our charge expires, so let's use it on this guy. He's using double blades, okay. He's dual wielding. He's actually doing absolutely no damage to Kemval. Well, that's exactly why he wants to eat everyone. He's just so powerful. And there we have it. We have disabled the security station. Now we need to head over to the monitoring stations, 1, 2, and 3. And obviously the bonus mission really not incredibly useful, but it is always nice to have an incentive to do those. Oh my goodness. Look at this base. This is, wow, very extensive. A very extensive base indeed. I should have used Crushing Darkness against that guy. I really should have. Okay, so let's use Discharge against this droid. Really quite a waste, but I have found that actually when I'm using Thrash, Thrash is making it so that the chance to gain a charge from our stance is effectively doubled because, of course, we have two strikes. As you can see, strikes the target twice. So if we use Thrash a lot more than lacerate, then we will have a greater chance at gaining charges. But do bear in mind that if we have two or more enemies to fight, then lacerate is going to be better. So on single targets, thrash. On multiple targets, lacerate. And that will give us a good amount of charges in a very short amount of time. So I'm quite happy about that. Now, the next apprentice that we have to fight is, of course, going to be an elite. So we are going to be resting up a little bit here. And then we will be using Crushing Darkness against him. Immediately. There we are. Oh yes, look at that damage. And yes, I do need to actually use Thrash. Oh yeah. There we go, and take him out. No problem at all. And now we can disable that, or destroy it, shall we say? Oh yeah, that's just another word for disable. Aha. Uh -huh. Very nice indeed. And now, head on to the next one. Ooh, okay. They are... Slowly hiking up the difficulty on these packs. And I'm now being force choked. I really thought I was immune to that. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive for one of them to force choke us. We should be doing the force choking. Huh. <laughs> okay. So, wait a minute. This has a 15 second cooldown as well. So that's actually not too long. And it does a lot of damage. And there we go. We are dispatching his forces very, very quickly indeed. And now we have... Apprentice Duma. Dumat? Yeah, something like that. And now, let's head on over here. Crushing Darkness once again. And a nice surge. Oh yeah! Look at that. Lovely critical damage right there as well. But still, I'm still thinking, maybe Lightning Charge is better. So, 
I'm actually going to give that a go. I'm actually going to give that a go. Let's change to Lightning Charge and see if that actually does more damage. Because right now we're actually killing enemies reasonably quickly. And we'll see. We'll see if that actually has a great effect. So let's just try it on these droids first and then we'll go from there. Now as you can see it's actually doing constant damage. It seems to be doing a lot of damage every single time I hit because it has a 50% chance of course. Whereas the other deals 50... Oh no, it also has a 50% chance, but it also deals internal damage. Hmm. Instead of lightning damage. Okay, let's just see. Okay. 36 there, 36 there. Well, it seems to be fine. We are killing things reasonably quickly still, but we are not gaining the surging charges anymore, which is precisely the reason why we are using this charge after all, isn't it? So, yeah, I think we'll just stick with what we have right now. And let's use this. There we go. And now we're going to try to get that charge back up to three to use it against this guy. We can actually use it at one if we so desire, but it does a little bit less damage than I would otherwise like. So maybe not. And there we have it. Open the reliquary door. Reliquary. Le oh my goodness, I can't say that. No! Reliquary. Le oh my. Wow. Okay, we found the one word which I cannot pronounce. Well, actually, no. There's a lot of words that I cannot pronounce, but... Goodness me, that is actually pretty amusing. <laughs> oh, wow. That really surprised me. Goodness me. Okay. Reliquary? Yeah? Reliquary. Oh, my. Okay. Never mind. Just ignore that. And now we have Lord Ogathu. Yes, I can say that. Okay, let's do it. He is an elite, so this is going to be rather impressive. Or maybe not, he's actually dying pretty fast. Oh, we actually have something that gives us a shock attack? Oh, okay, so we do actually have a little bit of synergy with this right here, with this shock ability. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the stances over here. And then we'll go from there, but yeah, I think we just need to get a little bit more organization with our bar right now. Make sure everything's cool. And there it is. Trandoshan Dash Leg Guards. Let's take a look at those. Heavy armor, unfortunately, and a vibro knife, so they are really quite useless for us. But we are going to... Oh, wait. Heavy armor might be good for Kemval. Okay. Wow. That was very simple. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be heading back to the Nexus Room Cantina, and we will be returning to Lord Zash, and hopefully she will give us something rather nice. We are gaining quite a few basic commendations, so if I come across a commendation vendor, it would be quite nice to purchase a couple of new pieces of armor, as that would really help us out in the long run. We would be a lot stronger, so maybe we can actually find one here? Social items... Underworld trading. Oh yes, I do realize that someone actually sent me a very detailed message, private message, in regards to what kind of crafting abilities we should actually get. So I'm thinking I will be taking a look at that once again. I saw it and I was quite daunted because you had given me so much information that it was a little overwhelming, but I am going to be very happy to have that information when we desire it. So, without further ado, I am actually going to be ending this episode of here, and next time on Star Wars The Old Republic, Sith Inquisitor Edition, we are going to be speaking to Lord Zash and seeing where she wants us to go next. So, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>